All right, this is the last in this four, uh, four part series looking at inclusion versus segregation in terms of ability in a classroom. Inclusion, by the way, also has to do with uh, physical needs as well as ability, all right? But we're looking at what high quality inclusive classroom instruction looks like. These are just kind of some main ideas just to kind of give you a sense I am putting online, if you're taking this from me, some more specific information about inclusive classroom strategies. But high-level inclusive instruction, it should be different, not MOTS or LOTS. MOTS means more of the same. If you have gifted learners, you just give them more assignments. Well, that giftedness is going to shut down. Students want to don't want to do just more of the same. Uh, so we... It wants to be qualitatively different, not MOTS. If MOTS is more of the same, LOTS is less of the same. Sometimes we think for students who have learning disabilities, we just give them less. No, they need things that are qualitatively different. This means the inclusive classroom teacher needs to be knowledgeable in skilled and inclusive practices. All right? We cannot expect teachers to know how to do this without training and professional development. As well, we cannot expect teachers coming right out of a teacher preparation program to know how to use these skills at high levels. This is a high level teaching strategy to be able to teach multi-level uh, inclusive strategies or inclusive instruction. Uh, in, at the undergraduate or teacher preparation level, we do not create finished products. It's not possible to create a finished product as a teacher in two years, four semesters of undergraduate or post back instruction. Not possible. Teaching is much more complex than that. So, if it is real inclusion, by the way, it means inclusion in all areas of diversity, meaning that you are dealing with ability, uh, learning disability and gifted and talented learners, but also emotional behavioral disorders. You're talking about language, culture, ethnicity, all these areas if it is real inclusive education. Too often, inclusive education is seen as remediation. Remediation is not inclusion. Remediation is simply finding students who are having trouble and finding ways to give them more instruction. That is not inclusion. Inclusion is multi-level and open-ended. The same content is presented to all students in an inclusive classroom. This is what inclusion is. But the knowledge and skills is made available to students of a wide range of abilities, interests, and learning styles. That means the same content is presented, but the activities, assignments, instruction input, and assessment varies. And the last thing I want to say relative to inclusion, that good inclusive instruction is good instruction. And it is good instruction for all students. Having multi-level and open-ended strategies and activities that enable all to reach their full potential. That is good stuff for all students. I want to point you to this very excellent website, the Whole Schooling Consortium, based on the idea that students with special needs should not be relegated to just a small portion of the school, which usually the segregated classrooms are, that like all students, they should have access to the whole school, not just a little part of school. That means inclusive strategies whenever possible. And this is a very excellent book I am going to recommend, uh, Inclusive Teaching. Peterson and and in Haiti, or Haiti, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that last name, but I've met Michael Peterson and, and uh, read this book, and they're both excellent. All right, that's it. I'm babbling.